Okay, let's work a few of these problems here, um, like we talked about in the last video. Now let's look at this and let's see what they're asking us for. And I, I marked through this so you wouldn't see the answers, even though they're in your book in example one. But I want to go through this and talk to you about how we're going to work these. Now the unknown here is our voltage. Now I'm going back and I'm thinking about Ohm's law, and I know that it is equal to voltage. And I got amperage here and resistance here. So now if I want to find voltage, all I gotta do is take amperage and multiply it by resistance. Alright. Well now that I know my total amperage is two amps. Okay. What I don't know is my total um resistance. Now looking at this, you know, we talked about five different ways to um measure resistance. A total resistance. I know each branch is 12, so I know that my total resistance has got to be smaller than my smallest resistive branch. Um, one way I could do this, and there's several ways we could find total resistance, but one way is I could take 12 times 12, remember this formula? 12 plus 12. You remember? The formula for total resistance is equal to R1 times R2 divided by R1 plus R2 and that's pretty much what I've done so I look at total resistance as being 144 divided by 24 um, which is equal to 6 right so 6 ohms would be my total resistance Okay, just checking that to make sure that's right. It is. So I'm looking at six ohms. Okay. All right. So let's say that total resistance is equal to six ohms, and we can look at that and say, well, yeah, it is less than twelve on both sides. Right, let's look at another way I can use to find that. My second formula is probably not as popular, um, but we use it with more than more than two branches usually. But we can use it in this case too. And that is 1 over RT is equal to 1 over 12 plus 1 over 12. So now I know that 1 over R, oh, excuse me, 1 over RT is going to be equal to 2 twelfths, right? Or 1 sixth. Well now if, I, if 1 over, let's go over here. If 1 over RT is equal to 1 over 6, then RT is equal to 6. All it is divide both sides, um, but take 1 and divide it by both sides. Um, 1 divided by 1 6 is going to give you 6. Okay, so I found it that way too. Let's look at our next method, and probably the easiest. Um, if you remember, if you remember this formula, um, if all the resistors are the same in each branch, I can take the value of one resistor and divide it by the number of branches. So what have I got? I've got 12 as the value of one resistor. How many branches have I got? Two? That's going to give me six. That's probably the easiest method. But now we've got to go back and we've got to say, well, what's the voltage? Okay, we knew the total amperage. Now we know the resistance, total resistance, and the, so this is total amperage times total resistance equals total voltage, 12 volts. All right, now let's go back here, and we said we knew this amperage divided. Well, how does it divide? You, well, you probably can guess that because the resistance values are the same, and whenever the resistance values are the same, um, not the voltage, but the amperage is going to divide across both these branches. If I want to prove this using Ohm's law, all I've got to do is take this EIR formula over here and I know my voltage across each branch is going to be the same so I know my voltage here is going to be 12 volts I know my voltage here is going to be 12 volts so if I know my voltage right and I know my resistance okay oh, excuse me that's ohms okay 12 volts divided by 12 ohms is going to give me 1 amp so that means I've got 1 amp flowing through this circuit and I've got 1 amp flowing through this circuit. 
added together, it gives me two amps, so I know my answers must be correct. Alright, let's look at another example. Alright, here's one that's a little bit more difficult because we've got three branches. And um, all of them have different um, different resistances. Alright, but yet we know that our total amperage in the circuit is 12, right? Okay, so if we know our total amperage, but we don't know the value of that resistor, okay, what we've got to do is we take this, um, well, first off, let's figure out what our amperage is in each circuit. Okay, what's our unknown here? We know that we should have 12 volts across each branch. Okay, and we know our resistance. Oh, that tells me I can use Ohm's law, right? So I can take my E, my voltage, which is 12, and I know I, I know my resistance. I don't know my amperage yet, right? But I, but I know my resistance here. Okay, and that's 4 ohms. So now I know I've got 3 amps in that first branch. Okay, that looks too much like a 39. Let me get rid of some of that here. See if I can make that say amps. 3 amps. Alright, so I got 3 amps in the first one. So the second one, all we got to do is change the value of this resistor, right? Okay, and here my resistor is 2 ohms. Okay, 12 divided by 2 is going to give me, let's make that a 6, 6 amps, right? So now I look at this and I say, well, I've got 6 amps flowing in this circuit. Well, now we know that our amperages have to add together to give us the total amperage. We know our total amperage, because it was given to us, is 12 amps. Well, I know now that my 3 and 6 is 9, and there's only one more branch. So this one's also got to be 3, right? And if the amperage is the same, so must be the resistance. So we've got to have a 4 ohm resistor here. Now we can prove that by taking that 3 amps and saying 12 divided by 3 is going to give me 4 ohms. So that proves right. So we got a 4 here. It's the same as the first branch. The resistance is the same. So is the amperage flowing through it. All the amperages added together give us the total amperage. So we know that's correct. Okay. Um, we could have found this another way too. And let's let's do that real quick. The other way I could have looked at this was let's say and this would have been a little bit more tricky, but we could have said twelve volts using Ohm's law, twelve volts divided by twelve amps. Excuse me, this should be over here. Twelve amps is gonna give me one ohm of resistance, right? So now I know my total resistance is 1 ohm. Hmm. So that would tell me that from my formula, remember 1 over RT is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3 dot dot dot. Alright, so using this, 1 over 1, 1 over RT, so 1 over 1 ohm, okay, it's going to be equal to 1 over 4, from right here, 1 over 4, one plus 1 over 2, 1 over 2, plus 1 over our unknown. Hmm. So now 1 is going to be equal to 1 quarter, plus 1 half, plus this x unknown here. Okay. So if I'm adding that together, a quarter and a half is going to give you three quarters, right? Three quarters plus x is equal to one. Subtract three quarters from both sides, it's going to give me one quarter is equal to x. Now, one quarter is equal to one over RT, so that means I've got to flip that for if, if one over one ohm is equal to one quarter, one over RT, then I've got to flip that so I can get RT is equal to four, which still gives me that four ohm number right there. 
So there's a bunch of different ways we can find total resistance, and that's really the only thing that's changed in this whole problem is how we find total resistance. Now here, it's not quite as complex because you can look at it real quick and say, well, what's my voltage? What is my voltage? Well, what's my total resistance? I look at all my branches are the same. So again, if all my branches are the same, I can take the value in one branch, which is 12 ohms, and I can divide it by the number of branches, which is 4, right? 12, 12, 12, 12. That's 4 branches, 4 legs, or 4 shunts, whatever you want to call it. 12 divided by 4 is going to give you a, resist a total resistance of 3 ohms. Right? So now I can say I don't know my voltage, but I do know that I've got 4 amps, to 4 total amps in my circuit and 3 total ohms in my circuit, so that tells me my voltage is going to be 12 volts. Now let's look at one last example here. What we see here is we've got to look at what are they asking us for? The amperage, right? Hmm, they're asking us for the amperage. So I know that the E up here is equal to, ah, the E is going to be equal to 12 volts, right? And I don't know my amperage. And I ask myself, do I know my total resistance? Well, I don't, but I can find it, right? Because I've got the value of each resistor here. Hmm. Okay, well, let's look at this. Again, we're going to use, we, we can either use two formulas here. Um, let's look at it this way, by just finding the amperage across each branch. Okay? We know that the voltage is the same across each branch, 12 volts. Okay, so now the question becomes, now that my voltage is known, and my resistance is known in each branch, what is my amperage in this branch? Well, my amperage in this branch is going to be 12 divided by 8 is going to be 1.5 amps. Okay? My second one, since it's the same, 12 divided by 8 is going to be 1.5 amps. My third one's a little different. It's not 8 anymore, is it? It's going to be, using Ohm's Law again, 12 divided by 4. That's going to give me 3 amps, right? Now I can look and I can add these together. 1.5 and 1.5 is 3. 3 and 3 is 6. So I can say, yeah, 6 amps is my total amperage in that circuit. Now that my total voltage and my total amperage is known, I should be able to find my total resistance pretty easy by taking 12, the voltage, divided by the amperage, 6, 12 divided by 6 is going to give me 2 ohms. So I've got 2 ohms of total resistance. What's the law? It's got to be smaller than the smallest resistive branch resistance, and that is 4 ohms. So yeah, that would definitely work. So these are our basic calculations. Let's just recap real quick what we've talked about. Okay. The five ways to find resistance. Okay. First off, we can calculate um, total amperage, then divide total voltage. Actually, that should say divide um, total. Amperage, uh, <coughs> still wrong. Divide total voltage by amperage. You might find that'll be the easiest way. Secondly, if there are only two resistors, two resistive branches. Then we use total resistance is equal to R1 times R2 divided by R1 plus R2. Okay. If there are m more 
then two branches. Then 1 over RT is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3 and so on. Okay. What's our other ways we can find it? Well, the other one's just like this, said so we're converting it into a decimal, right? That was another way. Um, and then our last one was was if all branches have the same resistance. Then it's the value of one branch divided by the number of branches. So those are the four ways we've used to calculate total resistance in a parallel circuit. And remember that the parallel circuit resistance always has to be smaller than the smallest resistive branch. Okay, so let's go back and recap the three rules of a parallel circuit. So you will be familiar with that. The recap is law one, and you'll be able to recall these. The total resistance of a parallel circuit is always less than that of the smallest resistive leg or branch. You'll probably hear me use the term branch more than leg. The voltage is the same for each leg of a parallel circuit. That means whenever I've got voltage going across these things, the voltage is going to be the same at the top of them. The sum of the individual currents in each leg will be equal to the total current. So if I've got 3 amps here and 6 amps here, I know my total current is 9 amps. Those are your three laws. Now don't confuse those three laws with the three laws of a series circuit. They're different. But I do need you to know all three of these laws. All right, that'll do it for Chapter 6. You're going to have a few problems to work, and you'll be expected to know this stuff for the test that's coming up in week, uh, a few weeks down the road here, but uh, well, a couple of weeks down the road, it looks like. All right, and if you have any questions, please direct them to me. Thank you.